What's up guys, Double Dog Gamer here, and today we are back with more Enlisted, the free-to-play World War II shooter made by the same company that makes War Thunder with their new campaign, the Pacific War. So each update, they add a new campaign, different battles, Battle for Berlin, Stalingrad, Normandy, and this time they're adding the Pacific War, US versus Japanese. And I gotta say, this is my favorite free-to-play shooter, and definitely my favorite free-to-play World War II game, and this uh, this new campaign just absolutely cements that even further for me. So the Pacific War is available for everybody. They do have some packs with different units, uh, including Marine Raiders with Thompsons and LVT-4s for the U.S. forces and things like that. Adds a bunch of really cool stuff, including bayonet charges. The Japanese, of course, get their uh, their sword, you know, their katanas, as famous, <laughs> famously used through them. Haven't unlocked that yet on the Japanese side, but looking forward to charging into some trenches and, you know, slicing some dicing some people up like my samurai ancestors. But I'm really liking the progress they're doing with Enlisted. We're, they're getting a lot of really cool stuff out. Needless to say, it is a pretty rudimentary uh, first-person shooter. It's not a lot of really realism when it comes to recoil and things like that. But what it does, it does good for a free-to-play game, especially a World War II game. People that like War Thunder, that like the War Thunder tank mechanics, kind of wish there was infantry in it and maybe some aircraft. It's kind of your go-to game. It's all in one, you know, all kinds of stuff in it. You can do planes, tanks, infantry. It's a lot of fun. The maps are huge. The matches are pretty big. Um, I just really enjoy the hell out of it. One of the really cool additions to it that I really enjoy is that the U.S. aircraft actually start on aircraft carriers. You actually have to take off from the aircraft carrier instead of just an air start that you usually get uh, just because of how these island assaults would go. Now, I'm not sure if it's map specific, but most of the maps so far I've taken off from a carrier on the U.S. forces. And when you first start the game, you unlock basic forces. You got your buffaloes, things like that. Um, you know, and as you progress up the tree, you get later into the war of the, the different types of things and units that were available. Now, this game is based off of units. Like, when you get your infantry unlocked or in the next level, it's an actual unit of that that participated in that campaign. So, you're not just unlocking, oh, I'm going to unlock this gun with a few infantry guys. No, you're getting, getting that unit. One of the cool things, though, is this BAR squad actually gets Willy Pete. Yeah, you get a Willy Pete grenade, which is really cool and something interesting because that was used a lot during the Pacific Campaign. Now, I know some people, if you've tried Enlisted or you're thinking of trying it, are going to be like, oh, it's, it's Gaijin, the grind's going to be really bad. The grind isn't actually terrible in this. You can max out a nation in probably about a week, which trying to do that on War Thunder would be absolutely impossible. Possible. But you can unlock your the different units and get up into the, into the levels of a campaign because each campaign has different unlocks for different sides, the Allies and the Axis or the Japanese and stuff like that. And that's the way you unlock things. Now, where the grind comes in is leveling up your weapons and your soldiers into sending them off into training, getting tiers and things like that. But I'm going to tell you right now, if you are a decent player at a first-person shooter, it's not going to matter. I, I have unlocked, fully unlocked certain crews and leveled them up to the max. And then other crews, I just leave whatever. And there's really no difference. Like, I just still get the same amount of kills no matter what squad I'm using, whether they're leveled up or not, or they got the unique guns and things like that. Now, there's a free-to-play battle pass on it where you unlock some pretty cool things and you can unlock some special weapons and things to give your crews. Um, that's all fine and dandy. I, it's not that bad. As you play up organically, you unlock the battle plat, the, the battle pass, and it's really not much of a pain in the butt. And, and most of the stuff that's there to unlock with the battle pass is pretty much meh anyways. I mean, like, the bolt-action guns are more powerful than most of the machine guns, and I prefer to use the bolt-actions half the time. This game really isn't pay-to-win. I mean, some of the tanks, yeah, they, they get a little difficult, but... The ground forces, it doesn't really matter. If you're good at first-person shooters, you can just take a standard squad and absolutely wreck people. It's not really a huge deal. And that's something I really like. When it comes to free-to-play games, this one's got a lot of interesting balance to it to make it to where, you know, if you're just good at a shooter, you'll be good at the shooter. You're not going to have to worry about, like, oh, this guy's got this gun and his squads and things like that. And that's what I think I like the most about Enlisted is no matter what you do with this game, if you're decent at first-person shooters, you'll be decent at the game. But this Pacific campaign so far, I'm really, really enjoying. Um, I was hoping this was going to be the next one, and I'm not disappointed at all. A lot of the huts you can just completely gun through and hit people through. 
Um, there are a few things that need to be changed, like the Japanese can put down flat guns, which is kind of weird in their engineering tree. Um, that definitely needs to get changed because it's been the Germans is the bad guy the entire time. So you can definitely tell there, there's a little things that need to be added to the Japanese that make sense. Um, you know, because right now they're using German stuff because they've never had to not make German stuff because it's always been the Germans as the bad, di bad guys. You got North Africa, Normandy, um, Stalingrad, Berlin, the list goes on and on. Germans have always been the bad guy. Now you got the Japanese. They do need to add a few little things because the Japanese are here. Now, since it is the Japanese, though, you got to run into the problem where the Japanese tanks during the war were kind of doo-doo because they didn't need tanks, you know. Taking tanks onto an island was a huge task for them. Not for America. We could just drop Shermans wherever the hell we wanted because, well, we're America. So, But the Japanese did have some pretty doo-doo tanks. So I think once the tree gets unlocked more and it gets further into the campaign, the Japanese might have to get some miracles sent their way uh, in the way of tanks. But most tank-on-tank -tank battles aren't really that big of a deal anyways because there's so many infantry running around. Half the time, if you die in a tank, more than half, it's probably infantry that blew up your tank. Because, well, a tank without infantry support dies a horrible, horrible death. They definitely have been making improvements to this game, but for, when it first came out, the aircraft were next to impossible to fly and weren't really worth using. Uh, but now, they're, they're a little more of a dream to use. They're easier to use. I uh, don't really see too many issues with them, and they fly pretty well. Uh, they're not randomly stalling out like they used to. Now, are there going to be giant air battles in this? Do you like flying around? Probably not. You might get some air battles here and there. Kind of flies more like simulator, you know, single player, first person viewer view kind of thing. Um, when you have War Thunder, it's not really a third person stuff. So if you're not used to that, you might have a difficult time. But the aircraft can be pretty deadly when they get bomb drops on a ton of infantry. Um, if your team's working together and they're spotting infantry or you're calling in radio and stuff like that, you can do some pretty spectacular things with aircraft. Since this is the Pacific, you do get amphibious tanks, which is something I'm really enjoying the heck out of, being able to try to kind of drive around and flank forces with tanks and things like that. Um, the terrain itself is awesome. All of these maps have been so far just amazing, and I've been having an absolute blast of it. I mean, it released the other day, and I'm already halfway through the American tree at this point, so I've been really having a lot of fun with this, man. Like, free-to-play games, you know, the world's kind of a money tight place right now this is definitely one that i can say you spend the money like you don't have to spend money on this to have a fun time you can just play it and have a blast now if you're kind of not familiar how it works the players aren't and ai are all mixed in together you get a squad of four to six guys and you take the first guy and as you're going around your ai and squad will follow you well if you die you switch to another person in that squad, or you can switch to that person in the squad if you want by hitting a button, um, just because if you got an AT guy or machine gunner and you need them, you can switch to them real quick. So when you're running into dudes, you're gonna run into one guy and his entire squad's gonna be with him and you guys are gonna be fighting each other and things like that. It's a really interesting take to make the battles larger, to give you as the player more choices of who you wanna take out, and at the same time make the scale of the battle a lot crazier while not adding 128 versus 128 so that way even if you know you join on a slow day you're not joining into half filled servers they're going to be full servers and there's going to be dudes everywhere trying to kill you and the ai ain't no slouch either the ai can absolutely mess your day up and give you a really damn hard time if you're not paying attention to what you're doing and they've definitely done some work on the ai the ai originally was absolute terminators and was difficult to fight alone i'd rather fight players all day of the week They've definitely toned them down quite a bit, but at the same time, they are pretty deadly. If you don't land your shots, they're gonna look at you and they're definitely gonna kill you. So you have to have some kind of, you know, general FPS knowledge to be able to play this game and, you know, actually get some kills. But this is still my favorite first person shooter that's free to play. I have an absolute blast with it. And I gotta say, if you're tired of the grind with War Thunder, the Pacific War is definitely somewhere you wanna be. And having a lot of fun with it you can unlock stuff pretty easily and just keep your squads how they are and just go in and kill people and have a lot of fun but anyways boys i want to know what do you think of enlisted what do you guys think of the new pacific war and do you guys enjoy it as much as i do all right boys i'll talk to you later peace